Hi everyone, I'm vlogging from actually one of my favourite views in London, from the gardens of the Horniman Museum. And if you can see behind me that glint in the background, that is the Shard and the most incredible view. But very exciting, I've actually been invited by the Horniman Museum to see the reveal of their new natural history display. I'm going to explore it, see what's happened and hopefully speak to their curator Joe, who is an expert in all things natural history at the museum. I'm having a little bit of a dream come true moment because I practically have the entire entire natural history display to myself. This here is the Horniman Walrus. He actually has his own Twitter account. As you can see, he is a taxidermy and he is absolutely enormous. So Joe, what is going on here? What's going on with the walrus? Why is he so huge? Why is he so huge? Well, lots of people think the Horniman walrus is overstuffed and I think in reality it's a little bit of that. <laughs> and it's also a little bit that he's a bit overstretched. When the walrus was first um, collected and brought to Britain, people had never not really seen very many walruses before and it would have been really, really difficult for a taxidermist without photographs and measurements and information to accurately reconstruct and depict the walrus so it doesn't really have the sort of blubbery skin folds and, and things that it would have had at that time. But how long has he been around for? Um, we've had him since uh, around the 1890s. Frederick Horniman acquired him from the Colonial and Indian Exhibition of 1886. Well people are definitely fond of him aren't they? Yes people absolutely love the walrus. He's a celebrity icon. He's the celebrity icon with his yeah, own Twitter he's the, account. He's the celebrity walrus, yeah, par excellence. Yeah. So the Horniman Museum has an entire room that's dedicated to its natural history display, which is naturally my favourite room of the whole museum. And over the past sort of couple of months, they have been refreshing it, and a lot of it has stayed the same. So we have a lot of uh, familiar cases and displays that people recognise. But as part of the refresh, they've introduced some really exciting new pieces and also brought back some old favourites, such as the model of the dodo. He's back! <laughs> the dodo's oh, back! Dodo. On the uh, left hand side, at the top left, you can see a turtle and then uh, that yes. bird there is the dodo. So that's one of the the, the, the ways. first sketch. This is the earliest known image featuring a dodo. <gasps> so that's why we think that the dodo looks something like yeah. this, but it's all a little bit yeah, artistic it, license. Yeah, and they're all, most of these dodos are based on uh, a few paintings that were sort of popularised from the 1700s onwards really. So we don't know if this is exactly what no, a dodo looks like? No, we don't know whether this is what a dodo looked like for sure. In fact, rec in recent years, scientific research has been able to help us realise that dodos probably weren't these much f more fat and gamely birds as they were. They probably were a bit more svelte and um, kind of able to run and be a bit more agile than these depictions actually show. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. I found my home inside the Horniman Museum. Look, it's a beehive. Oh, oh my gosh. It's, they're alive. Oh my gosh, I thought it was a model. They're actually moving, look. Hey, hi bees, I didn't know that you were here. So the Horniman Museum has existed since 1901 when philanthropist and trader Frederick John Horniman collected all of his artifacts that he had found from all over the world and wanted to keep them in one place as a gift to Forest Hill. He wanted to bring the world to South East London. So this is how the display started. Nowadays it has over 350,000 artifacts and curiosities from world over. We're really proud to be able to display some of Horniman's original um, collection as well and tell Horniman's natural history story a little bit yes. because lots of people don't really know that he collected um, natural history and actually it was probably his first love really. He largely bought a lot of his specimens mm -hmm. or um, was given them by friends and acquaintances, that kind of thing. But he, we have got some examples here of specimens he did collect in the late 1890s from um, Japan and um, wow. so he India, traveled then. India as well. Yeah, towards the end of his life, he started to do more traveling. <laughs> and he had um, different uh, certain species named after him in his oh. honor as well. So we've got the Horn and Swallowtail Butterfly, yeah. um, an African swallowtail that was named in his honour and the Horniman beetle which is a kind, a kind of African beetle as well a really shiny beautiful beetle that was named in his honour. So alongside the old we now have the new and this area of display has been dedicated to 
an inspiration place. And the first artist they have here is Polly Morgan. And her work is absolutely fascinating. Jo, can you talk me through this new display that we have here, which has a lot of fashion items inside it? So here we've got an example of the Huya bird um, pair that were highly desirable from a scientific collecting perspective because the females have longer bills than, than, than the males and they were interesting from a biological perspective. But they also became really used in um, as decoration in hats in the sort of early 1900s when the Duke of York at that time visited and was presented with one of the tail feathers of a Huya bird. And because he wore one in his hat band, this then stimulated a whole, well, if he wears one, I didn't we know all that. want to wear one, and it hastened, unfortunately, the gradual extinction. Ooh, they've put the salsa on now. It's very weird dancing to salsa whilst looking at taxidermied armadillos. <laughs> but I love it. Um, so we've got a collection of about 254 cases of uh, taxidermist Edward Hart to uh, collected all kinds of species of British birds just from his very local area in Christchurch in Hampshire which is quite near sort of the new forest and he created these beautiful cases with these beautiful backdrops depicting some of the original habitats where the birds came from. But this is a quite an interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, the little egret is one of the oldest we have in the collection. It dates from about the 1820s apparently. It's, it's an really old bird. <laughs> and it, would, it was really rare on the south coast at that time. It wasn't really lots of birds would have just been seen on a few occasions at that time but now it's nesting there because of the change in climate you can actually go down to Christchurch Harbour and see the yeah. egrets nesting and on the converse side I guess um, the puffins would have been nesting on the coastal cliff areas down on the south coast of England really much more prolifically back in yeah. the Victorian era. And now we really don't get them nesting in that area very much at all. It's quite rare to find um, nesting and breeding pairs on the Isle of Wight and places like that. What's amazing about the new display is that in a very small space you can see how taxidermy has been used over the years. So in one corner the inspiration space is incredibly modern and then in the middle you have an interesting display about how taxidermy was used as a fashion accessory and then you've got the bird display which is important because it helps us to understand the changing natural world around us. So it's a really exciting new way of laying everything out. What can I say? Some people go to red carpet events or movie premieres. I go to the opening of natural history displays at museums. But I know where I'd rather be. That's it for this vlog, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm actually stood in front of the amazing Horniman Tower right here. It's just such an incredible building. But I hope you enjoyed the vlog and you enjoyed seeing some of the items that the museum have on display. It's a great little museum in London. So if you can come, definitely, definitely go. But if you're abroad, then check them out on Instagram because they have a really good Instagram page. Also, why not follow the walrus on Twitter? I hope you enjoyed that, guys, and I'll see you soon. Happy Museum Week. Bye.